What is up, y'all? It is Ted Lasso here. We're here to talk about daily fantasy sports for week nine of the NFL season. All right, now that that's out of the way, happy Halloween, everyone. This is my costume. I can't just like show up with a mustache on the channel and not explain it. Um, so here we are in costume for this video. Uh, we're going over week nine, uh, try to get you guys in the best position to win, start out the week with a first look of this slate. As always, we're going to start over on the sportsbook odds and take a look at some of the games we want to stack. I took a quick look at this slate. It just obviously came out uh, as the games finished today. A couple of the games I definitely want to target. So Tua stacks absolutely went off this week with Waddle and Hill uh, and Tua all doing really well. The Bears have shown some competence on offense recently, uh, so they might be able to sustain a game that goes over that 45 total. So we want to play them here. Vikings Commander is another game I'm interested in, as well as Chargers Falcons. This one could get really chalky at a 48 and a half over under. A couple other games we're interested in, always like the Bills, super viable. Packers Lions might get chalky at that 49 over under. I don't know if I like it, to be honest. Two good defenses. If the Packers stay healthy, they had a couple guys go out with injuries uh, this past game against the Bills. So we want to watch that, but this could be kind of hairy. Biggest game of the afternoon is Seahawks Cardinals. We know these two offenses could put up points. DeAndre Hopkins should very much be in play. Let's go take a look at some of the DFS salaries talk about some of those games and the stacks we want to go after. All right, so at quarterback, there's a couple really good options here. Josh Allen, highest player on the slate, 1,100 higher than the next highest guy at Kyler Murray. Uh, he went off at KC, didn't go off um, this week against the Packers, but he didn't really need to. Um, has the upside to break any slate, obviously in play in every single format. Tua went off this week against Detroit, 32 points absolutely in play cash potentially let's see if there's any other value down the board uh heineke's come up a little bit at 5400 if you want to go there i don't think i'm going to be doing that pj walker actually looked awesome he put up 20 points on 5.2 salary if you went to him instead of like a malik willis or sam ellinger you probably did really well um as a pay down quarterback option um, but you know, maybe Trevor Lawrence has come down a lot for a Vegas team that just got slashed. I'm probably playing Travis ATN, uh, this week, just full disclosure there. Uh, and it looks like the Patriots are the bottom of the barrel here. So really not a ton of great quarterback options, but if you go with Josh Allen, Kyler or Gino, uh, in that game that we really like to, uh, and then maybe one of these guys down here, those are probably your options. At running back, the most expensive player is Austin Eckler, who has been crushing it since week four. Barely, 24 points was his worst game. Uh, he is priced up incredibly high at 8,800, highest he's been all year, and he's really the top of the class right now at running back. Um, we had Josh Jacobs absolutely bust, which killed me in cash this week. Um, we have a couple other guys that are kind of in here, but there's no one outpacing Austin Eckler in terms of volume, in terms of potential, in terms of fantasy upside. So he's going to be hugely in play here. Aaron Jones looked really good, racking up over 100 rushing yards against the Bills. He's going to be in play in Detroit, where the offense is really running through him at this point. So we'll watch Lazard. If he's out, we're going to you know really key in on Aaron Jones here. DeAndre Swift, we talked about, has just been on a tear recently. Since the trade of James Robinson, we're even more high on him. Uh, two straight games of 100 rushing yards, involvement in the passing game, in a game where they're probably going to be favored. Are they the favorite in this one? Where are we looking here? Jaguars. Did I miss it? Ja Jaguars, Raiders. They're slight underdogs, but they're at home. I'm totally fine with playing Travis Etienne here. Then a couple other guys, Kenneth Walker, just continues to just get in the end zone. Not his best day at 12.2 last week, uh, but he did come down a little bit in price and is absolutely viable. And then the other guy that's kind of interesting is Khalil Herbert, who kind of has usurped uh, David Montgomery as the Bears starting running back. Um, 16 carries, 99 yards, just short of the bonus, uh, which would have made him a smash play. He was still pretty good. Um, we'll take a look at him as well at running back. At wide receiver, Cooper Cup came down with an injury and has also come down significantly in price. Uh, he was 9,600 last week. He comes down to 8,900. We're going to watch out for his ankle. If his ankle is healthy and he's good to go, get a lot of practices in this week. He's a smash play at 8,900. Seems like a huge discount. A couple other guys to keep an eye on. Devontae Adams absolutely busted against New Orleans with that entire offense. He's come down to 500 in price against a Jacksonville defense that just isn't as strong as the Saints and should be a bounce back game for the Raiders. I love Devontae at that price. 
D-Hop, of course, is just a target monster. His floor is apparently 12, 13 targets. Um, at 7,900, he's still absolutely viable. He's been crushing it since coming back from his suspension with no Marquise Brown. The targets aren't going anywhere, so he's viable as well. Love Mike Evans at 7,200. Metcalf at 6,400. Comes down after his patella injury and getting 10 targets in that game. He kind of crushed it. DJ Moore has still not expensive enough for his usage in this game. He had a big touchdown, which buoyed that 30-point score, but 5.8 is too cheap for him. And then, yeah, Garrett Wilson is kind of the other guy in here. He still he only went up like a, a couple hundred. Yeah, he went up 600 after his monster day. Only seven targets, which I expected more. Um, but in a game where they're going to be passing a lot, Garrett Wilson seems to be a smash play this week again. Tight end is another week. No Andrews, no Kelsey, and no Kittle in this one. So we kind of got to figure out where we're going uh, at tight end. Zach Ertz, what is it, like 2015, where he's the number one tight end on the board? Um, a, he's involved enough in a good game environment. You can play him. Hawkinson had a big gain. He had a 58-yarder um, against Miami this week, so he's viable as well. Tanyan looks good. Uh, I know he only had four, tar four targets uh, in week seven. He had, I think, five or six in week eight here against the Bills. I like him a lot. 3,800 is very cheap for his usage. Higby has fallen drastically in price. 3,700 here. Six targets, two targets. We'll wait and see if Van Jefferson's more active, but he probably is a smash there. And then Evan Ingram continues to get disrespected for his role, and by DraftKings just does not care that he's one of the better tight ends in fantasy this year. Um has 3x that 3.3 price in the past four weeks. Um, so that's an easy play at tight end. And then coming down to defense, you, we know we don't like to pay up at this spot, but we'll take a look at these defenses down below. Commanders have a good pass rush against a team in Minnesota that throws a lot. So potential there. And then Bucks against the Rams. They just lost Shaq Barrett, so they might not have as much pass rush, but the Rams offensive line is awful. They're good for a pick, potential upside there. And then the Jags D, I guess you could go with as well. Um, they get a lot of sacks and the Raiders stink so potentially a lot of upside there depending on if Josh Allen actually gets traded from this team we'll watch that as well now that we've taken a look at the slate some of the games we want to play let's take a look at some lineups and let's start with our cash lineups these are 50 50s and head to heads or double ups that we want to just finish in the top half so what we need is a high floor and high ceiling combination we need guys who are going to be highly owned and guys that give us access to the best games on the slate so we can start off at the quarterback position and Josh Allen, obvious option here. Uh, we talked about him already. Huge rushing and throwing upside, definitely in play. But we're gonna he's obviously the most expensive guy on the slate. So we're gonna go down to Tua. He's throwing an absurd number of times per week, has that floor, and does rush. Not as much as Josh Allen, but uh, he has that upside as well. So we're going to grab Tua here. And I don't necessarily believe in stacking in cash, but there is one guy he goes to more than anyone else, and that's Tyreek Hill. Similar floor to D-Hop in terms of targets. Uh, just an absurd number. Same, He doesn't go up in price, uh, despite having a monster game this, this week against Detroit. Gets an even softer matchup against Chicago. Uh, not softer, but just as good. So we're going to do a little stack there for this game against the Bears. Next up are our running backs. Now, there's a ton of really good backs on this slate. Eckler is viable. Cook is really good. Taylor might be healthy. Finally, we'll see. Uh, but none of these guys strike me as huge cash options just yet based on usage and salary combinations. The guy that I'm looking most at is Travis Etienne. We've talked about him on a huge tear. 6300 price. That's too cheap for what he's doing right now. So we're going to plug him in. And then we're also going to plug in Kenneth Walker, who didn't have a great game. 12.2 uh, points on week eight, but usage is still there. He was actually, he got a target or two targets in the receiving game. Um, so if he can get two targets, he's going to smash, uh, given that he just seemingly gets into the end zone every week since he's been a starter. Um, so we're going to click him here as well. And with this build, we kind of need to save some money at wide receiver. There's just so much going on. Um, and, you know, you think about some of these top end guys, they all have massive upside, but we can find guys who get similar numbers of targets later down the board, uh, cheaper here. Uh, so we're going to start with DJ Moore, who still under 6K, shockingly. Um, even he, he, you know, buoyed 
by that big touchdown, still seeing an absurd number of targets, and the offense is just better with P.J. Walker and no CMC uh, because he's clearly getting more points. Um, so we're going to grab D.J. Moore. The usage is really great there. And then we're going to go down and grab another guy on a bad offense, but he's just super involved in Jacoby Myers. No matter who's at quarterback, whether it's Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi, he's getting those targets, he's getting that usage, and he's just open all the time, makes it a really friendly environment against a Colts defense that struggled to stop slot receivers. We are going to grab Jacoby Myers here. And then our third wide receiver, we're going to play a three wide receiver build this week, is going to be another AFC East receiver, Garrett Wilson. We talked about him, clearly the favorite of Zach Wilson, uh, who has just become a gunslinger. He had a great week this week, even though he threw three picks from fantasy. He did awesome. Uh, Garrett Wilson, 20 points last week, comes up a little bit in price, but in a passing environment, we definitely want him. With 3,100 left per player, we kind of have to play some budgets at our last two positions in defense and tight end. Evan Ingram, we talked about him, too cheap for the, his involvement, four of six targets, double his price. Like that's just a kind of a smash cash play. The Raiders were really bad this week, so uh, hoping that they continue that positive way. And that leaves us with 3K on the board, for our defense, and we talked about the Bucks. Uh, Rams give up a lot of sacks. The Bucks have good pass rush. Uh, there is potential here for some pick sixes, fumble sixes. So that's going to be our first look cash lineup. Let's go over to tournaments right now. One team we haven't talked about yet is the Los Angeles Chargers. We're assuming that Keenan Allen is going to be back in this one. It's been several weeks. He hasn't. He played a little bit in Week Seven, but we haven't seen him fully since Week One, where he actually got hurt. If he is back, I'm very excited to play Justin Herbert stacks. Uh, Austin Eckler is obviously viable in those stacks, given that he gets an absurd number of targets. Um, no Mike Will means that they're going to have to check down. They're not going to have their deep threat, and a lot of their passing is going to be done in the short field situation. Uh, so Austin Eckler is absolutely viable with a Justin Herbert stack, and then you can bring it back, or not bring it back, continue that stack with Keenan Allen, with a Josh Palmer, or you can punt to one of these guys. Uh, I think Carter still involved even though he's a little expensive for his usage and you can always go to Gerald Everett who did see a price increase this week going up from you know the mid to low threes hot to fours up to 4.8 um, so worth watching him there uh, but that's kind of what I'm looking at for a Herbert stack and then Mariota I definitely I'm, this is a game I might not consider doing a bring back just because the passing volume is so low now there was a definite increase this week given the high shootout environment in Carolina, but typically not seeing more than 20 throws a week. So it's going to be really hard to justify some of these receiving options. Drake London has just plummeted in terms of his value. Uh, he was seeing north of seven targets a week. Now he's lucky to get five in that shootout game. Uh, and then Kyle Pitts did get in the end zone, came up a little bit in price. So we'll see. Um, but nine targets for him. Given that he's cheaper than Everett, maybe viable. And then the, what's really frustrating is that there's a, a split in this backfield right now uh, between Caleb Huntley, who got 16 carries this week, six last week, versus Tyler Algier, 14 carries and 16 carries. He's clearly the number one, but it's by no means a lead back situation. So monitor that if you're going to bring back with Atlanta, but I'm all over Justin Herbert this week. Aaron Rodgers isn't someone we typically think of as a gross fantasy option, but he has yet to score 20 points in a week this week, given how much they run the ball. Uh, they're so focused on getting the ball to Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon that he hasn't really gone off Aaron Rodgers, and he's coming to below 6K for the first time probably 5, 10 years. Um, so Aaron Rodgers is a very interesting stack against a Detroit defense that just can't stop anybody. And if you're going to stack him, there are some very interesting options at receiver. Number one, his favorite target is Alan Lazard. He might not play, um, so we want to monitor that. Uh, he is 6K, so he's you know if he's not playing or if he's going to be limited, we need to be careful and not play him. But there are other options that we can stack him with. Romeo Dobbs caught his touchdown and had a bunch of other really nice plays uh, this week, despite having zero the week before. If you want to stack Aaron Rodgers, I'd absolutely throw Romeo Dobbs in there. Sammy Watkins is viable in these stacks, as well as Watson, if he gets cleared from this concussion he sustained, or you know, if the, these two are out, you can go to Amari Rodgers or Torre, who caught another touchdown. And then, of course, Robert Tunyon, Bobby Funyons. You know, he is a guy I, I'm all over uh, in fantasy. If you want to play him, just go for it. 
And on the bring back side, I don't know what to expect from the Packers defense this week, but the Lions have proven that they can just score fantasy points. Uh, So if we're going to stack with someone, DeAndre Swift is someone who didn't get a ton of usage, but did a lot with what he had, Uh, putting up 14 points on, what was it, five, 10 touches? I mean, not amazing, but given the fact that it's first game back from a five-week absence, we'll take it absolutely. Jamal Williams just continues to vulture touches, uh, put up two touchdowns, 22 points. I guess if you want it to be really contrarian, you can play him. Amon Ross St. Brown, 10 targets in his first game back from concussion and second game back from his hamstring injury, I believe. Um, So he is absolutely viable. If you wanted to go to a Reynolds or Khalif Raymond, both are super high upside guys with pretty low floors. And then TJ Hawkinson as well. You can stack with any one of those. And the last stack I want to talk about is this Kyler Murray Arizona stack. Seattle's defense actually looked really good. Granted, they were up against the New York Giants, who absolutely did horrible. Um, They threw up five sacks, two fumble recoveries, both on special teams. So something to monitor. But I believe that Kyler Murray is in a smash spot against the Seahawks at home this week. If we're going to stack him, it gets very easy. You go to DeAndre Hopkins, who is getting 13, 14 targets a week, and Rondell Moore, who has turned into Marquise Brown uh, for this offense. He did break a kind of weird touchdown this week. He was like had his jersey grabbed, so it was a little bit of a fluke, but did get into the end zone, secured eight targets that week. I think he's absolutely a smash play. And then if you want, you can try Robbie Anderson, depending on news or Dorch, as well as Zach Ertz, uh, who is the most expensive tight end. And you can be pay up to be contrarian in that spot with your stack. Uh, I'm I think I might play this one in like my high dollar tournaments this week. Uh, big fan of Kyler Murray. Think he could go nuclear for I think the first time this year, he's had a couple good games, you know, 26, 29 this week. I think we could be in for the Kyler Murray game this week. Um, So definitely want to play him here. And of course, if we are bringing it back, there's tons of options on the Seattle side. Kenneth Walker, super involved, seemingly scores a touchdown every week. Or you can go with one of the two receivers in DK Metcalf, who is apparently not injured, got 10 targets. Or Tyler Lockett, who has finally come up above 6K for the first time this season. Second time this season, he was 6,500. He came down, eight targets, pretty easy there. So you play one of those two guys in your Kyler stack and you're just... You win. Hope you guys liked the video. Happy Halloween, and I'll see you in the next one. Woo.